What's up everybody, it's Jonathan from OT for Tech and today I have an exciting first impressions and unboxing video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Nexus 6. Now this is the highly anticipated Android smartphone of 2014 and I'm happy to have my hands on one. So before we get to the unboxing portion, let's go ahead and take a quick look around the packaging so that way you know and are familiar with the box itself. As far as the packaging is concerned, it's very plain and minimalistic. You can see the huge engraved 6 resting right there on the front with a little bit of color on the sides. Honestly, you can't help but think that the packaging looks awfully familiar to the other guys. But anyways, there is a little bit of color on the sides like I said, and this is where you'll find the size capacity that you chose as well as the color. You can see I opted for the 32GB Midnight Blue variant, but it's also available in white as well as 64GB of storage. So go ahead and get your unboxing knife and let's cut this thing open. I I have done several phone unboxings and I can tell you this is the largest phone box I have ever opened. The OnePlus One box was big but in a different way. This thing is thick, wide, and tall. It's really, really big and that's because it houses one humongous phone. The Nexus 6 is huge. I mean, don't let the videos and pictures fool you. This thing is big. The iPhone 6 Plus is big and so is the Note 4. Well, this thing is bigger than both, but we'll get into that later on in the video. I have a quick comparison for you guys so make sure you stay tuned if you don't want to miss that. Now, I can just go ahead and tell you just off holding this thing in my hand for the first time, the Nexus 6 is really pushing the boundaries of a tablet and a phone. I mean, I remember one of my first Android tablets was the Galaxy Tab. I mean, the original Samsung Galaxy Tab. It had a 7 inch display and this thing is almost 6 inches and it's a phone that's just unreal. For now, let's just go ahead and set this thing to the side and see what else we got here. Underneath, you'll see a red envelope or box that says Nexus on the front. If you open it up, it's going to have some general paperwork inside. The very first piece of paperwork has a 6 on the front for Nexus 6, of course. If you open it up, you're going to find some general information on button placement, what the buttons do, and where to find the different ports. Just some basic stuff that most of us really don't need. So let's go ahead and close that up and put it off to the side here. Then behind that, you're going to find a SIM card ejection tool, which of course has some instructions on how to use it. And again, most of us really don't need that. And lastly, we have some general safety and warranty information. And speaking of warranty information, you can actually purchase Moto Care for your Nexus 6 on the Motorola website for $129.99, which will cover accidental damage if you're interested in that. At the very bottom of the box, you're going to find your micro USB 2.0 charging and syncing cable, as well as the turbo charger. Now, the turbo charger is supposed to give you 8 hours of use in just 15 minutes, which I will be including in my full review, so make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss that. So let's go ahead and peel off the plastic here on the front and begin the tour around the device to check out the hardware. The Nexus 6 takes its design from the 2014 Moto X, which should come to no surprise. The back of the device is done in a soft plastic material. It's the same construction that you would find on the Moto X standard plastic back editions. You can also see the shiny Nexus logo, which has some metallic material in between the letters. At the top, you have your 13 megapixel camera with dual LED flash embedded into the camera ring itself. The camera also features OIS and has the ability to capture 4K UHD video. Oh, and there is no plastic protector covering the camera lens. Take it from me, I tried for an hour to take it off. Below the camera you have the iconic Motorola dimple, which resembles more of the 2013 model Moto X. Which leads us to the front. The front houses the massive 5.96 inch Quad HD AMOLED display with a PPI of 493, which explains the gargantuous size of this beast. But that's not the only exciting part of the front panel. You also have dual front firing speakers, which is a nice touch. At the top, you'll find your dedicated sensors, the two megapixel front facing camera, and reports have stated a hidden LED light behind the front facing speaker. On the right hand side of the phone, you're gonna find your power button and your volume up and down buttons. They are in a different location than usual, which what I mean is instead of being more at the top, they are closer to the middle to accommodate the size of the Nexus 6. The power button is very textured and maintains the same almost serrated design as the Moto X. The top is home to the 3.5mm headphone jack as well as some antenna lines and the nano SIM card slot. The nano SIM capability is a very welcomed feature to me since I switched from an iPhone occasionally. Moving on, the left side houses nada, but it does showcase the metal trim that goes all the way around the device and it looks beautiful. And it also matches the color of your device, in this case midnight blue, but I have to say it does look a little bit more purple than blue. The bottom is where you can find the micro USB charging port as well as some more antenna lines. For me the Nexus 6 just seems way too big. I mean if you include my natural palm arch, it's basically the same size as my hand, and that's, that's, 
really hard to hold the phone with one hand then. Compared to the iPhone 6 Plus, you can see the 6 Plus is much thinner, and that's due to the Nexus's design. Although they look very similar in size, the Nexus 6 is a tad bit longer and wider than the 6 Plus. You can feel the difference in your hand, but after a bit, the Nexus just starts to feel a little bit more comfortable to hold than the iPhone 6 Plus. And that's thanks to Motorola's implemented ergonomical structure of the Nexus 6, but the same thing can be said with the Galaxy Note 4. But aside here, you can see the Note 4 is thinner, and looking straight on, you can see the Nexus 6 is a smidge taller and wider. But again, due to the design and the natural curves of the Nexus 6, it feels much better in the hand than say the boxier design of the Note 4. But this is just a matter of personal preference. You might have your likes and dislikes and they may not agree with mine. So let's go ahead and pop out the SIM card slot and slide in the SIM card and turn this thing on. While it's booting up for the first time, let's go ahead and run through the specs here. The Nexus 6 has the quad-core Snapdragon 805 processor, clocked at 2.7 gigahertz, which does not support 64-bit architecture. A little bit strange. It has 3 gigabytes of RAM and the Adreno 420 for graphics, and a massive 3,220 milliamp hour battery. So just to do one more quick overview of the display, you're looking at a 1440 by 2560 Quad HD display with a PPI of 493, and protecting that display is Gorilla Glass 3. Now the initial setup process on the Nexus 6 is really nothing special, as it's not updated to Android 5.0 Lollipop just yet. Once you complete the entire setup process, and it takes you to your home screen, and then you click the little OK button, you can see you're prompted to update to Android 5.0. So go ahead and click install, and go through that process. Lollipop introduces a lot of really cool features. Even though this video is not an Android 5.0 video, I have to show off some of the new features like the new lock screen and notifications and app switcher which gives you all your recent or open apps in their own card. And this includes the different pages within the app. I'll do a separate video for Lollipop if you guys want, just let me know in the comment section and by hitting that like button. And of course swiping up from the home button gives you access to Google Now and you can see the material design on the keyboard here as well. Android 5.0 is really really impressive. Everything is buttery smooth and just as fluid as ever. The animations are an excellent touch as well and I love the ability to see where everything is coming from rather than just appearing out of nowhere. And of course you can double tap the Android 5.0 tab in the settings to load up the Android Lollipop Flappy Bird game which is extremely hard. I mean it's really hard. Just getting one point is a freaking victory in my book. You also now have the Google Create folder on your home screen, which gives you access to all of Google's own productivity apps. You can remove it off your home screen if you like, so you really don't have to keep it there. Google has also separated its text messages from Hangouts, and I really like the new messaging app. Even though it is a small change, it's kind of cool. You can always combine the two again if you'd prefer in the future. Lollipop also introduces Ambient Display, which is very similar to Active Display on the Moto X, but personally, not as good. But it's a good start to something great though, so I commend Google for trying. It's pretty much only only beneficial if you have an AMOLED display, keep that in mind, or Super AMOLED, otherwise it's gonna drain your battery like crazy. Being completely honest, my first impressions on this display are really not that great. I mean sure, it's big and beautiful, but the launcher does not seem to be fully compatible with the resolution, so icons and text appear blurry at times. Viewing angles are pretty good, so no complaints there. The display itself runs a bit on the warmer side, especially when you compare it to other devices like the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, but it's not as bad as other people are mentioning. Also, color accuracy and reproduction are not not that great. Expect really saturated colors and deep dark blacks, pretty much the same thing that you would expect from AMOLED panels, but definitely it's not as good as a Note 4's display. There's really no comparison between the two. I really love the dimple on the back. It's not only awesome cosmetically, but it's really important when it comes to balancing the Nexus 6 with one hand. I'll cover more on that in my full review. So far I'm really intrigued by the Nexus 6. I love it, but I hate it at the same time. It's massive, and it's going to take a lot of getting used to, but I love viewing material on my phone with the Nexus 6, at least so far. Time will tell, but there is one thing I can tell you now regarding the design, and that's the Midnight Blue model is a fingerprint magnet. If you have some greasy hands, you're going to get this thing really greased up on the back. Luckily, it can be cleaned pretty easily with a little bit of water and soap on a washcloth. Just be careful. I love Android Lollipop, and the more I play with it, the more and more hesitant I am to go back to iOS. Anyways guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys want out of the full review, and if there's any other videos that you're interested to see with the Nexus 6. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe so you don't miss my future videos and full review. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, and I'll talk to you in the next one.